Hi lovely people, welcome back to my channel. I am Tiffania and I am excited as usual because this is our second video in the series, The Weight. I am 40 and still single. So in this video, I wanted to just kind of talk about some of the lessons that I have learned and some of the things that I do not do. And that has really kind of helped me on this journey um, of 12 years being single and focusing on the Lord. So before I kind of dive into the lesson, I want us to read the scripture of 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse one and two. And it says, the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you continue to feel sorry for Saul? I have rejected him as king over Israel. Fill your container with olive oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse who lives in Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, if I go, Saul will hear the news and he will try to kill me. So let's kind of go back up to um, verse one, where I remember telling you in the last video to fill your container with joy, fill your container with happiness, with kindness, with obedience. But I kind of want to really elaborate on that because during the season of the wait, you have to fill your container with the fruit of the spirit. You have to fill your container with love. You have to love yourself back to life because when we come out of a failed relationship and when we make mistakes in our past, we are really, really hard on ourselves and we critique ourselves really hard. And matter of fact, we say words over our life to destroy our future. So what I want you to do is to fill your container with love. Love God, love yourself, and love the people and that is around you. Love has a way of producing healing. Love covers a multitude of sin. So fill your container with love. Fill it with peace. Fill it with joy. Fill it with kindness. Fill it with obedience and patience and purity. These are the things that I want you to stay focused on. These are the things I want you to daily fill your container with and then I want you to get up and go get up and go after you fill your container with the things of the Lord now in the scripture continue to say I am sending you to Jesse who lives in Bethlehem I have chosen one of his sons to be king now in verse 2 but Samuel said if I go Saul will hear the news and he will try to kill me that is a typical strategy of the enemy anytime you the God send you on a mission or you are rebuilding your life or you're pursuing greater you're pursuing purpose you're pursuing the Lord the enemy always try to bring back your past into your present and he does that in such a way to bring destruction to bring destruction distraction and he will even use a counterfeit he will even use another man and he will have that man to present himself as your king to pull you off of the will of God be careful be careful during the time of rebuilding, during the time of deliverance. It is a very sensitive time. It's a time of transition. You're transitioning from your past. You're transitioning from brokenness. You're transitioning from a place of hurt and pain. And you're now transitioning into the fullness of God, the wholeness of God, the purity of God, the righteousness of God. And the enemy will always try to sabotage your transition. He will always try to stop you from pursuing the will and the heart of God. So I wanted to just add this verse in because it's very important as we build from our past as we put away the past and let go of the past and let go of our history and trying to rebuild and to gather ourselves back together again and pursue the lord with everything that we have in us he will try to hinder you from becoming who god has called you to be from becoming the best version of yourself so that way when the lord do present your king you will be ready your heart will be healed you will be whole and he will be whole and you guys will be able to have a godly marriage so I wanted to just really talk about some of the, the things, a couple of the things that I pretty much learned and I do not practice whatsoever. And one of them is that I do not date. I do not believe in dating. 
And I know that that may be a shocker because I typically get that a lot when I do talk to people and I tell them that, hey, I'm single for 12 years and I'm waiting on the Lord. They were like, oh, you know, I will hook you up. You know, I have a friend. Don't you date. You should do online dating. And they tried to give me all this advice that I did not ask for. However, and I usually pretty much all the time tell them I don't believe in dating. And I usually get this really weird look, but this is a reason why I do not believe in dating because guys, it is not biblical. It is not in the Bible that says that we should date. Dating is a term that the world used to, to, to be in a relationship or engage in some type of romantic relationship without commitment. When someone said that they're dating, that means that they're not fully committed because you can date several different people. Now, the Bible does, does teach us about courting. It does teach us about courtship. Courtship now is when two people have made a commitment to get to learn, to get to know each other, learn each other, and that they're committed in a, rela they're in a committed relationship, okay? And they want to pursue marriage they want to pursue um um yeah they want to pursue marriage so courtship is what as we as believers we as single women need to focus on in a sense of understanding the difference between dating and courting so guys i do not date and people ask me then how are you going to know if this person is for you or how are you going to meet anyone and i tell people all the time i'm usually kidding and joking but i'm really serious listen god knows my address he knows what i do on a daily basis he knows where i work he knows where i go to the grocery store he knows he knows me he knows where to find me he know where i need to be at all he know where i am at all times so he can make that presentation he can present his son Okay, and I know that it sounds a little bit crazy and 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 and, and a little bit super, um, spiritual, but it is the truth. I don't believe in dating. I don't believe in dating randoms. I don't believe in dating socially. And the thing is, with dating, as women, as we wait, that is a very dangerous um, habit or in dangerous act to engage in because because of the fact that we're waiting and we desire marriage. That means when someone wants to date us and we maybe spend one or two or three, you know, different dates or, or, or time together, we as women, we start to kind of really think and we start to wonder, we start to plan and we start to do all these different things and we, we start to create an emotional connection with that person. And that is dangerous because the person, if they don't understand spiritual things, they can say, hey, you know, I dated her and she's just not the one. So guys, you don't want to date as women waiting. You don't want to date. OK, you want to make sure that you wait on the Lord. And when the Lord present um, that person to you, both of you guys can come in agreement to say, hey, let's court. Let's get to know each other. Let's learn, learn, learn each other. Or let's, you know, pursue this thing with a, um, a counselor or with our with a mentor or with a pastor. And then we can from there, we can pursue marriage. So that is one of the reasons I don't believe in dating, because people um, use dating as an excuse to um, waste people time. They use dating as an excuse to kind of get into these sexual relationships. So I don't believe in dating. Now, the second thing I don't do is that uh, well, not don't do rather, but one of the second things I do do, we have to learn to be content. And Paul says that we have to learn to be content in all seasons of our life where you, and I tell people all the time this, um, that you're going to spend eternity with Jesus. Matter of fact, in heaven, there's no marriage. So we have to learn from now to be content in our singleness, because if God does not send our Adam we're going to be eternity with Jesus. So you have to learn to be content with him and be satisfied with the Lord because he is enough. And matter of fact, guys, when you are married, you still have to be content. You still have to be content in marriage and be content in your singleness. So being content is really essential for a journey of singleness, in purity, and in wholeness. We have to learn to be content because when you're content, 
with your season or with your portion, then you won't readily entertain random men or you won't um, entertain when others is trying to pursue you when you know that that person is not for you. So thank you so much for tuning into this video. I'm looking forward to our next video. Um, I really hope this video was helpful. But nevertheless, if you have any questions, please leave it below. If you need prayer, if you need to, um, if you don't understand this video or if it was a little bit confusing um, um, for you, then that's okay. Leave me a comment. We can discuss it. We can talk about it. Also, share your story with me. I need to or I would like to know what are some of the things that you do you do do and some things that you don't do. So thank you so much. I will see you guys again in my next video. Have a great day, ladies. Thank you so much, lovelies. Bye.